How do I get my Windows machines to network with each other? Hey everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. This has been a question for the ages. I mean, literally, as long as I've been doing Ask Leo, this has been a problem for Windows. Here's an example question. I recently purchased an Asus tablet running Windows, and I've tried just about everything to connect my other Windows machine to the tablet. Both computers are set to use the same workgroup name, namely MS Home, but the tablet asks for a password when I'm setting up the home network. Can you help? So again, this has been an ongoing issue. Networking is hard. In fact, it's harder than it should be, especially if all you're doing is running Windows machines and if all you have is like, a couple or a few of them. And indeed, I've written a few articles about just how hard it is, and they have not been complimentary. However, I think we can get it to work in this situation. I have what I would consider a formula, if you will, of things that I do to my Windows machines when I set them up, if I know I'm going to want them to talk to one another. Now, when I say talk to one another, the primary thing I'm trying to do here is to make sure that file sharing works. What that means is that on one machine, you have a folder that you share and that on the other machine you can connect to so that you can copy files back and forth or to and from that folder on the other machine. It's a great way to get data copied from one machine to another. So. What are the steps? What's my formula? Well, step number one seems kind of obvious, but it's very easy to overlook. And that is simply make sure the machines are on the same physical network. The reason that is easy to overlook is if you're using more than one router. If you're using one router and you've connected your machines to the same router, then they're probably on the same network. However, if you're using multiple routers, two routers, as we sometimes do to protect, say, the family computers from the kids' computers, then it's easy for things not to work. Let's face it, one of the jobs of a router is to protect you from what's on the other side, right? A standard single router is protecting all of the machines on your side from the nastiness that can be the internet. If you've got multiple routers, it's very possible that the machine you have on one side of the router is being protected from connecting to a machine you have on the other side of the router. So that is something to at least be aware of. You need to make sure that the machines you want to share, that you want to communicate with one another directly, are on the same local network, which typically means they're on the same local side of the same router. Okay, now we can start talking about things on your computer. Uh, here's Windows 11. Step number two is the same work group. This is pretty much what you had mentioned. If I go over to a system and I look at domain or work group, this lets me change the work group that this machine is on. And in fact, I just notice that this is the wrong work group for my machines. So I'm going to change that. My existing work group is work group, and my local work group that I use on all of my machines is, probably not surprisingly, Note and Boom. Welcome to the work group. There's really nothing special going on here. It's not like there is some master controller for these work groups. It's simply that all of the machines are on the same work group. They identify themselves as being on the same work group. So, yep, got to restart to make this happen. So we'll do that. So we're back. And if I go to the same place and look at the system um, and look at the domain or work group, this time I'm on the Note and Boom work group. The reason I do this, um, it's not a huge change, but it does make some aspects of networking a little bit easier. Specifically, I think more machines will appear in Windows File Explorer by default if they're in the same work group. 
It also, I tend to do it here at home because if somebody brings a computer and fires it up on my network, which I allow, being on a different work group from them sets up a tiny little barrier to them accidentally browsing some of my machines. So one of the other things that I do, step three, is to set up the same login on every machine. On this machine, you can see I have an askleotest at gmail.com, which is what I'm currently signed in as. But there's also a local user account called Leon that has a standard password. When I use my computers, I try to log into the same account name on each, be it my Microsoft account or my local account. But what I find very interesting about this is that it doesn't have to be the account you sign in on that you need to have on all of your machines. So this Leon account, which is a local account across all of my machines, with the same password on each of those machines, is what I end up using when I'm connecting between the two machines to do file sharing or something else. It's easier in part because it's not intertwined with email addresses and online confirmation or anything. It's a local account. So when I'm asked, for example, for a password to connect to a remote machine, because maybe I am signed in with my Microsoft account, when I'm asked for a password to make a remote connection, I type in the username and password of the local account that I know is on all of my machines. I also make that local account administrator capable. I think this also helps a couple of things along the way. Step four, well, I kind of alluded to that already. For the accounts that I have set up on all of the machines that are the same, I use the same password. Now, if you're using a Microsoft account to log into all of your machines, if you're using the same Microsoft account to log into all of your machines, then by definition, you're already doing this. However, if you're setting up local accounts on all of these machines, as I tend to do, then you want to make sure that that password is going to be the same on all of the machines. There are two reasons for this. One, if your Microsoft account ever goes passwordless, then I'm not sure what the impact on networking is going to be because you're not going to have a password that you're going to be able to provide when asked for one. Also, when you enter a username and password for a network connection, Windows, in various situations, will remember what you've entered and not ask you to enter it again later. Step five, of course, is what, again, also mentioned earlier, all of the accounts I've created on my machines that I use for networking are administrator-capable accounts. Yep, limited user accounts can add a layer of security, I suppose, but for the most part, it makes life a little easier at the cost of just a little bit of security risk, depending on how you use your machine and your own level of expertise. When it all comes down to it, the things that I've mentioned so far, my formula, using the same username and password on all of your machines and setting up administrator accounts on all of them, are actually all little tiny security issues. That's why I say you're assuming different security in some ways, and any issues related to any of this are going to be very, very small. Ultimately, it's all about authentication. When you connect from machine A to machine B, machine B needs to authenticate you somehow. It needs to confirm that you've been given permission to connect to the share that you're trying to connect to. How Windows does this is so complex. Even people that understand networking deeply can easily get confused by all of the different options, all of the different things that Windows will look for, all of the different techniques, and so forth. Fortunately, your system will use your current login credentials on machine A as the thing it will test to begin with to see if you've got access on, per on machine B. And if not, you've got this local account that you can use and remember the username and password that doesn't involve Microsoft at all. These techniques work really, really well for me, but I don't want to guarantee that they're going to work for you. Networking, as I've said, is incredibly complex. It's very frustrating, and it is certainly possible that other random things might affect it. And for completeness, don't get me started on cross-platform connectivity. 
I have Macs and Linux machines and getting them to talk to one another is always an exercise in frustration, sprinkled liberally with profanity. For updates, for links to related articles and more, visit askleo.com slash 12917. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.